For this video, I'll be working through the Level 3 2018 Waves paper. Question 1. Uh, all elements emit a number of distinct fixed wavelengths of known special, uh, known as special lines um, unique to it. each element. Hydrogen emits four visible lines as shown below. Um, light, apart from hydrogen, uh, light from a hydrogen source can be passed through a diffraction grating to form interference pattern. The wavelength of each spectral line can then be determined by measuring its angle, uh, measuring the angle to its first order maximum. Um, if you're colorblind, you can have a bad time, but whatever. That's red, green, blue, pink. Um, although technically this shouldn't be pink, this should be uh, ultraviolet, but yeah, whatever. Question one: The lines in the direction, direction uh, on the diffraction grating are 1.6 times sent to the negative six meters apart. Um, so 1.6 micrometers. Show that the wavelength of the spectral line at the first order maximum is 16.8 degrees. Uh, at 16.8 degrees is 486 nanometers. Right, this is a show question, so you have to first write the formula, and on your formula sheet you'll see D um, sine theta is equal to N lambda. Then you'll have to rearrange, um, because you're, trying to sh you're showing that the wavelength is equal to that. So in other words, lambda is equal to uh, D sine theta divided by N um, which is equal to 1.68 times 10 to the negative 6 sine 16.8 uh, divided by 1 equals 485.56 times 10 to the negative 9 meters. Um, and then under here, 486 nanometers. Right. If you didn't, if you just, like, oh, you could, if you wrote, you had to write the formula, then you had to rearrange, then you had to correctly substitute, and then you had to write the answer. If you didn't do this part, you didn't get achieved. Um, yeah, I know because I marked the paper. Right. And quite a, oh, not that many people stuffed it up. Uh, the telescope is rotated from the 16.8 degree, uh, 16.8 degrees position to position Z. Um, it's from there to there. Um, the location of the next spectral line. State the wavelength of this line. Explain your reasoning. So I'll just pause the video, write the answer, then discuss. Right. So I've said, I've stated the formula: d sine theta equals n lambda. Um, it will be the red line. There's a few ways to go about this. The first way I thought of was the uh, the larger the wavelength, the more it's going to diffract because um, it's going to be closer to the slit size because um, the slit size is huge compared to the light. Like It is ridiculously big compared to the actual wavelength of the light. So as you get larger wavelengths, as you go up the spectrum from green to red, here's, you know, green's 486, red's 656. Um, I don't know if that's red. 630 is red. Anyway, um... You had to say, as the wavelength is proportional to sine theta, um, in other words, the wavelength is proportional to sine theta, increasing the angle means an increased wavelength. Um, if you just said, like, um, if you just said it's closer to the slit size, thus it'll diffract more, you only got achieved. And if you didn't say it was red, you got not achieved, um, which is, yeah, sucks for you, but anyway... Um, calculate the maximum number of order maximum number of orders visible for the 656 nanometer line. Um, again, we have our favourite formula: d sine theta um, over lambda equals n, um, and then max is when theta is I put proportional to 90 degrees. It's, it's like 80, 89.99999. Um, I'll just put 89, we see that, 0.999 um, degrees. You get my drift. You can't really have 90 degrees because it's like an impossible number. But anyway, substituting it in, you get uh, one point, because D is 1.68 times 10 to the negative 6 times sine. Um, we'll go with sine... 89.999, it should just go 90, but whatever, I'm being pedantic, divided by 656 times 10 to the negative 9, 
Quite a few people missed out there. They just went divided by 656. I'm like, you idiot. 2.56 number of orders two. This 2.56 means you get, you get two and a half maximums. There's no such thing as half a maximum. The next maximum is off the board. Um, so you get a round down to two. Um, here, here's an example. So you'd have your first maxima here. No, you wouldn't. Here's your first maxima here. Your second maxima would be on uh, somewhere over here. Your third maxima would be over here, which is impossible. Like it, it, you wouldn't be able to project that onto a screen if it's over here because it'd be going backwards. Um, and even then, it can't go backwards because it's not a reflection. Anyway, the diffraction grating is replaced with a double slit that has a separation of. 1.6 times 10 to the uh, 1.68 times 10 to the negative 6 describe so it's just literally you're replacing the diffraction grating with a double slit same slit separation describe any describe and explain any changes that will occur to the location brightness and width of the maxima for the five uh, 656 nanometer line to so the red line right I'm going to pause the video write a full answer and then we'll discuss so I have said, for the new def uh, double slit grating, the location of the maxima is unchanged. As d equals sine theta in lambda, the d the slit separation and the wavelength haven't changed, so the way other uh, angle is the same. The brightness will decrease as there are now less light sources constructively interfering. The width will increase as compared to a multi-slit. Um, any areas are oh, as compared oh, comma there. Um, as compared to a multi-slit, any areas of path difference, not exactly like lambda or one wavelength, gives destructive interference. As you move away from the maxima, um, path difference slowly increases, so it gets gradually dimmer. And here's a picture of sort of what the difference is. Um, if you have multiple sources, if you just go off the maxima line, you'll get like, and as long as, long as it's the same light, as long as it's not like a rainbow color. Otherwise, if you're using white light, it'll split up and you get a rainbow. Um, but if you just use red, if you just move just to the side of that um, maxima, um, you end up getting, like, destructive interference, but from other areas on the slit. It's hard to explain, but from... So if you, like, here's a light that you're looking at. It comes down, or you, you just look at two slits, comes down, you get destructive... Inter or you just say you get constructive interference... I hope you can see that. Um, if you move a little to the side, you'll get destructive interference from another one of those gratings further along. Um, you really just got to do it in real life and see how it works. On the whole, very few people answered this question correctly. Um, out of the thousand papers I marked, very, very few got it. It was a stupid question. Um, I didn't really like it. The standard asks for a quantitative... Um, like numbers and stuff explanation of the dif you know of diffraction slash interference um this is sort of arguably this is scholarship but whatever um so you only needed to get you need to get all three correct but only one technically correct and the one technically correct was easy to get and that was the uh location uh, but anyway that's enough ranting for that